In this video, we're going to look at the bubble sort algorithm and how we can code this in MATLAB. Now, the bubble sort algorithm is a very simple algorithm that has the following algorithmic process. We iterate through the array between i is equal to 1 to n. We then do a second iteration of the array between j is equal to 1 to n minus 1. And we just compare the elements at j and j plus 1. If the element at j is greater than the element of j plus 1, we simply swap the values around. Very straightforward, let's jump into the code. So we'll say the array is equal to a random integer array between 1 and 20, with 1 and we'll say 20 data points. And we will say that our function will return an array, we'll call the function bubble and it will take in an array. We'll say that n is equal to the size of array in the second axis. And we will say 4i is equal to 1 to n, 4j is equal to 1 to n minus 1. So that's the first two steps. We'll just say if the array at j is greater than the array at j plus 1, then we swap the values around. So we do this by creating a temporary variable where we'll store the j value. We will then say that the j value is equal to the array at j plus 1 and we will say the array at j plus 1 is equal to the temporary value. And that's it, that's the bubble sort algorithm. If we just uncomment this and we say that we say the sorted array is equal to the bubble of the array you can see the array which was unsorted and randomly assigned is now uh, organized in ascending order. We can visualize what is going on in the bubble sort by creating an index variable. We're going to say this index is going to be 1 to the size of array in the second axis. And we'll just say figure 1, we'll clear the axis and we'll hold on points is equal to a bar graph of index array with a face color blue. We'll turn the axis off and we will say that the y limit is going to go between 0 and the maximum array value. We can then pass this points, this points variable into our array, into our function, sorry. And at the end of this for statement for the j, we will just say that the points.y data have been updated to be the array, and then we do our draw now. So we can visualize this in ascending order. And if we just increase the size of the array so we can get a better overview of what is going on, you can see the array is being sorted in ascending order. Now we can go one step further and we'll apply a mode. So I'm going to say my mode is descent and we apply it as a mode to the function. And I'm just going to say that if the mode is equal to ascent, we will perform this operation. Else, if the mode is equal to Descent, we will perform the same action, but this time it only occurs if the array of j is less than the array of j plus 1. So it will organize it in the opposite direction. So if we run this now for descent, you can see the array is quickly sorted in descending order. We will apply an update to the color when the array has been sorted. So we'll just say that the points face color is equal to, we'll set it to be green. So all of the bar, all the bars will turn green when sorting has finished. Just to let us know, sorting has been completed. And we can increase the size of the, the sort, like so, and you can see exactly how it's going to populate these values in descending order. And again, we can do the same thing for ascending data types. 
So that's going to wrap it up for the bubble sort algorithm. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.